Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? That's right. YDBT Daily coming at you. YDBT Daily on Thursdays. We're going to do it Thursdays. Every Thursday, 8 o'clock, we do YDBT um, Daily. We do Talking Shit on Tuesdays, and then we do Peasant Chat on Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Today is a day that my creativity was just through the roof. I'm telling you, after seeing the Dark Horse make world... Uh, disappointing horsepower. Guys, the Dark Horse makes the same power as the GT. Like, the, the, the GT350 made a lot more power than its Gen 2, you know, not rival, but its Gen 2 stablemate, the GT. So the GT made, I don't know, high 300s, and the 350 made 440. 450 460 like uh, like good horsepower so now the dark horse comes out and lays the biggest egg on the planet making barely over 400 wheel in the auto and about 430 to 440 in the manual and before you say that's actually impressive i'm going to show you an example of how the gen 3 makes more power than a dark horse with simply a tune and high octane. And you don't have to pay $90,000, not 70, because everybody knows the dealers get their cut. So we'll talk about industry reaction to the dark horse absolutely laying the biggest egg in modern times. This is just, and I'd love to say I told you so, but I'm sick and tired of being right. So before we get into any of that, let's have Mr. Bill O'Reilly say hi, say hi to you guys. Give me about 20 minutes to give you my rundown, and then we'll talk some shit with the people. Here we go. <laughs> okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. <laughs> I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live. <laughs> I always love that. That fucking, fucking thing sucks. sucks. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We're going to get out there with the sponsors. Thank you very much for keeping the disco ball rolling. Disco ball has not stopped rolling since the sponsors pay their monthly nut. They be on the channel. Two Auto Solutions, Rami Zaidan, Two Auto Solutions, got a F-150. No, F-150, Gen 2 F-150 making 600 rural horsepower with a Pro Charger. Not bad at all. Race Motors got a race coming up. Check them out. All really pretty cars that I'll never be able to afford. They might look down on me if I show up with a ZR1, so I'll probably never go there. Race Motive, Dean High Performance. He's in the gym right now, getting ready to beat the shit out of the competitor's prices. That's right. <laughs> DNAHighPerformance.com. Parkfarm, Parkfarm.com, they're going to have busted Dark Horses coming in, and the only thing worth shit on the Dark Horse is probably the short block. Parkfarm.com, Conformers, Conformers.com, I guess him and Nelson Racing Engines got together, they got a little racing uh, uh, engine program going, so he's providing the 2650s for the Nelson Racing Engines program, badass shit, good for him. Header, ultimate header, ultimate header.com, ultimate header on Instagram. PMAS is sending me a 149. Thank you so much. Got the invoice. Calumer Transmission. Calumer Transmission.com. Posted up a picture of um, billet forks and you guys didn't care. I'm blown away by that. You guys want to know what's going on with the aftermarket manual stuff? Ben Calumer posts stuff on his page and y'all motherfuckers don't even like it. Let's say hi to the people and get after it. Oh my God, did I actually put the live chat in there? I thought I did the live chat. I'm sorry. Because I, I know you guys seen your name pop up and shit so i want to make sure all is kosher so we got coyote fury travis douche did it it's old man or it's oh man i'm hung so low 2000 mcr monty 540 joe swish maki mock alec baldwin the wolf oh no it's eric bardrin zay snipes dixon diego robo style done again omar one le rocco zioli is zioli zioli it's it's oh man but me true viate true rubiate racing is in the house that's all I can play before they send the copyright strike. I guess he got his first paycheck from the refinery. Good for him. JD Swag, TJ Sikorsky, Izzy R, Dustin, D Rock Fox, South Detroit Entertainment, Zach B, uh, Robostop, and Leon, Mike J, Fox Barry, Krasta Omar. Wow. Gregory Uffich, Austin Maynard, Troviate again, Crush Rotch, Mike J, Zach B, NDI Lee, Austin Maynard, Nicholas Mangione, Abel S550, Elver Galarga, Austin Maynard, Mendoza's Coyote. 
Glass Group Coyote, Nat Jew, Christian Duran, or Duran, or Duran, Infamous S550, Anthony, Heath S2R, Tony Dominguez, Terrence, Griffin, Nitrous and Bias Plus, Phil Fez, Jared Wells, Red Bird, it's just a two valve, Is the R again, Perry Trowery, wow, Coca Cola, the Cartel Sinaloa member, Coyote Austin, <laughs> Anthony, AC of Regret, it's just a two valve, Mikey 50, Infamous, and all the usual suspects. Oh, someone gave me a super chat, so I want to thank you for that. The Mitch McConnell video, go on my Instagram, at YDBT4Life. The latest story or post that I put up there, it, it just comes to me. It's topical. It's on the money. The Mitch McConnell stuff is on legit on the Alex Flores page on Facebook. Just posted a video just for that. My creativity has been spawned, opened up because of the failures of Ford and the Dark Horse. So let's talk about it. 408 to 410 real horsepower through a 10R80 is dud as shit. You either have insane drivetrain loss or you're not actually making 500 horsepower at the flywheel. Why do I say that? Because a tuned Gen 3 manual makes 440. A tuned Gen 3 manual makes 440. So you're telling me with a tune I'm making, I don't know, uh, 480? Stock cold air, stock cat, stock everything. You're just saying, you're telling me just octane and 27 degrees of timing makes 440 to the wheel, which equates to about 480 flywheel? I don't think so. But according to everybody, they're like, oh no, it's just because they're ringing it out in fifth gear. Guys, the dyno doesn't know what gear it's in. The dyno has no idea what gear it's in. The dyno does math. It goes roll speed versus RPM. Most Gen 3 F-150s get a dyno hit in fifth gear. Why? We don't want to see that drive shaft fly out the bitch. I have yet to test any, as long as, as far as I know, any Gen 3 F-150 10R car, uh, they're all 10Rs, in sixth or seventh gear. It's crazy. It will blow up the drive shaft. So they mostly all get it done in um, fifth gear. Someone says, the manual Dark Horse made 440, 390 foot-pounds. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And this is why. My video on Gen 3 timing test, E85, stock cold air, stock manifold, stock! 2019 manual, bone stock, no modifications. This is what it made, guys, with an E85 tune. 27 and a half degrees of timing, 442. 29 degrees of timing, 446. 31.3 degrees of timing, 446. 410 torque, 411 with 29 degrees, 27 degrees, it made 408. How is the dark horse making less horsepower through a manual then a E85 tuned Gen 3 for $35,000, $38,000. You can get them now. Why get a dark horse for $90,000 when your Gen 3 Mustang bone stock with a tune can make exactly the same horsepower as a dark horse? But Alex, we can play with the animations as we're rolling. Well, there is an answer. Now, a lot of you said twin throttle bodies, twin throttle bodies, twin throttle bodies. And we all know it was an emissions thing. What does that mean? So do you remember when the, the 21 and up made a little less power than the um, 18 to 20? Why is that? Especially the Mach 1s. Well, I'll show you. The carbon trap right here. See this? This is the filter. This is a carbon trap. The carbon trap on 21 to 23, especially the Mach 1s, are really restrictive. So what were people doing after the fact? They were taking them off. Before, after. It's like a, not a mesh, but like a big screen. So basically this filter was a carbon trap. Why is a carbon trap installed in a car? Because when you shut off a car, emissions come out of the cold air intake. That's right. The gas that's left 
in the injectors and the rails can actually, the emissions can bleed back out of the throttle body and out of the air box. So they mandate that that gets, you know, mitigated. So right here, you end up having a carbon trap, which is blows my mind, right? You're, you're producing carbon with the car. So to mitigate car fumes coming out, you, you, you put a carbon trap. I am blown away that carbon is used not only as a negative, but a positive in this situation. So people took it off and it made a little more horsepower and it made sense. Okay, so now Ford started seeing that that's not enough. Just having a carbon trap here is not enough. So what do we need to do to lessen the amount of air leakage that can come, or the uh, fume leakage that can come out of that cold air? Well, they, redes uh, they redesigned their carbon traps. Their carbon traps are now round. Where are they? Their carbon traps, come on, Alex, they're, they're now like this. In each tube, in each tube, you have a carbon trap like this. What do you think is more restrictive? Do you think this is more restrictive? Or do you think this restricts the air more? This. So they said, wait a minute. Okay, we have to really do a good job of getting rid of the emissions coming back after the car is shut off and potentially coming out of the cold air because the EPA is watching. So it was restricting it so much that they said, let's put another cold air in there. And another, no hey, hey, Larry, engineer, what do you think we should do to, 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 to keep the airflow and keep the carbon traps in the pipe? What about two cold airs? Well, you're a fucking genius. Two cold airs, two throttle bodies, with a carbon trap in each cold air flows the same as one cold air and one throttle body in stock form. Do you get it now, you dumb sons of bitches? Do you get that two cold airs and two throttle bodies had absolutely nothing to do with power? It had to do with preventing, preventing the loss of power because of the carbon trap that is put in the tube to mitigate any leakage and emissions coming out of the cold airs. Now, the, the, this is the million dollar question. What happens if you remove the carbon traps from a 24 GT? Will it make more power? Or will it fail safe? Let's talk about that for a little bit and the implications of that. I have argued and I, I have no inside knowledge. I am literally spitballing. I'm taking a chance. But man, my thought process seems to have a little bit of tread to it. So you're telling me if the carbon traps are removed, no check engine light? Okay, so the next thing people should start doing is take out the carbon traps. Because if the reason was we need two cold airs and two throttle bodies to equal the flow of what the single used to be with no carbon trap, now that we have two carbon traps, what happens if you remove the carbon traps from each? Will it throw codes? If it throws codes, it is like removing a DPF from a diesel and tuning around it. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm not saying Ford put two carbon traps in there as a literal trap. But I'm telling you, when you really start thinking, why? Why didn't you just put a bigger cold air? Why didn't you just make a bigger tube? Why didn't you just make a 110 millimeter, a 120 millimeter cold air with a carbon trap so the flow would be fine? No, they did something so crazy out of left field and it put another, that means you redesigned the manifold. 
throttle body, calibration, map sensor, two carbon traps, two filters to make the same horsepower as an 18 to 23 GT that is is supposed to make 460 crank and with a tune it makes 444 and a dark horse at 500 crank makes 440 two cold airs two throttle bodies two carbon traps and if you remove the carbon traps what happens ah that's going to be really interesting so junior put out a post because he saw the um it's simply disappointing but i'm not surprised i heard the dark horse made great power on facebook now the comments in here are very enlightening so depending on who you follow and depending on who you who you fuck with you might learn a lot kyle robinson's yikes yikes edo martinez laughs at it but then we have someone that is in the industry and has the kiss of ford let's see if the right here dustin whipple okay he owns whipple the only difference is the better rods with the engine, okay, which allowed higher RPM limit. The dual intakes are there due to the restriction of the stock hydrocarbon trap. I'll repeat that for the dum-dums. The only difference is the better rods, which allowed a higher RPM limit. The dual intakes are there due to the restriction of the stock hydrocarbon trap, meaning the only reason it's there. It's so that it doesn't show a big loss. So they stuffed another cold air in another throttle body so that it flows the same as a single cold air and single throttle body on previous setups. There is no power gain with dual throttle bodies and dual cold air. Uh, thus, uh, John said they claimed more horsepower on the spec sheet. And I don't expect the carbon trap delete to pick up a ton of power. Has it been tested? Yes, it picks up power. But keep in mind, there's two now. Last year, they had one restriction is less. The 22 to 23 lower power due to the HCTs, hydrocarbon tra uh, carbon traps. The cal on these cars are far more aggressive, meaning 20, 24 and up, than before. And even more sensitive to braking miles and octane. Junior says, 18 to 23 was already an aggressive cal. Not sure why Ford chose to tighten that window more with trying to make more power that way versus changing something else on the engine. I think more displacement should have at least landed in the dark horse price tag. That's right. And Justin Dugan, this post has so much information. American Muscle owns a manual car. Listen to what he said. Justin Dugan. For the record, our manual 24 made a considerable amount less than our 2018 we had on the same dyno. Sad trombone. John Lund says, Justin Dugan, disappointing to hear. Now, am I happy about this? Absolutely not. I just, this is why, this is why I'm not surprised. If you pay attention to what's happening, Ford has no competition. So what happens when you have no competition? You get lazy. You get lazy. You're at the top of the mountain. Imagine a lion had absolutely no other competition and no cheetahs, nothing, nothing. Meaning every fucking, you know, is it antelope? Every zebra, everything out there, he can just get fat on. And that's what happens when there's no competition. You just get fat. Now, the other manufacturers are going to have a, let's just say, a head start. Because the government is mandating electric stuff. Ford is now going to go, I don't, we don't got to do shit. But we don't got, man, we're going to chill the fuck out. I don't got to do, why do you, why do you want to maximize anything? Dodge is done. Camaro's gone. Psst. Chill out. Just keep making the same piece of shit. Just, chill. Just put your feet up. Just keep making the same piece of shit and sell it to the public. But, but sir, we're having issues because the dealers are marking it up fifteen dollars to $20,000. That's not my problem. We're the only ones left. We don't got to give you something innovative. We don't got to give you anything nice. All we got to do is give it to you. It's like lazy dick. 
If you're a fat chick, you'll take whatever. You don't get... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There is no competition. So now the Mustang is it. If you want a rear-wheel drive manual muscle car, almost 4,000 pounds. Imagine the Mustang got heavier and less powerful and more complicated. How is that an improvement over 18 to 23? It's not. So a lot of people thought I was just hating. A lot of people thought I was just talking this shit. A lot of people, guys, look. Look at what's happening. They're dynoing these cars. They're not making any more power. Because Ford knows, and the Ford engineers know, there's no competition. We just got to keep making the same thing until the government finally drops the hammer and says, okay, that's it, last run. Like, a lot of people thought this was going to be the Cobra in terms of, oh, they're going to under... You know, they're, they're gonna they're gonna undersell the horsepower. Then you get on the dyno, and it's just nothing but this over and over and over. There is no competition, so Ford has no incentive because who are they gonna steer you away from? Not Dodge, not 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 Chevy. So you guys thought it was a positive that Ford is the last muscle car standing, and this is what happens when you have no competition. You get dud ass products. And then people say, I'm going to quit this and I'm going to get an old LS. I'm going to get an old Corvette. I'm going to get an old Mustang. I'm going to get an old Dodge. I'm going to get anything else but the new Mustang. But Ford doesn't care because they're the last one. Last one standing. Absolutely crazy. We'll talk about it. We'll talk a little. So again, carbon traps are the issue that they put two throttle bodies and two cold airs in it, not because of any power. Stop it. So again, as always, Super Chats are appreciated. Memberships are even more important. We'll talk some shit with the people. What do you think of what of, what, of everything that's going on? What was your reaction when you saw that the power output was laughable, laughable, with their stuff. I, I just want to show you this video that I made because I'm very proud of my editing um, on Facebook. Oh. Oh, my oh my God. Facebook is so stupid. Facebook, don't autoplay. Stop autoplaying. We don't need you to autoplay anything. Play when I want to play. This video, I love it because it's Mitch McConnell's frozen fucking whatever. He had stroke face. No, you're going to need a minute. There's going to be a lot of motherfuckers at the dyno. At dyno days going, Shh, you're going to have the Mitch McConnell face when it's all said and done. Um, I'm going to go get an 04 Cobra or a Boss 302 for my next toy. I would never consider this turd. I'm going to stick with the S550. As soon as they said it was 500 horsepower, I knew it would be underpowered. Wait, we fat shaming the dark horse now? If Blowpark can sell the same Challenger and Charger for 12 years, Ford could have made the S550 for seven more years. <laughs> Let's not forget that it's 3,900 pounds and makes the same power as the Gen 3. Do this. Grab a bone stock Gen 3, throw 150 pounds in the trunk. Tell me how thing how that thing drives. Rocco, nobody knows how much that thing's going to hold because it's not tunable yet. It's got better rods. Now, if a 5.2 NA variant, imagine the Predator motor. 12 to 1 compression. 12 to 1 compression. The Predator motor, 12 to 1 compression. In a dark horse. Now we're talking. Now that's an upgrade. GT, 5 liter, manual auto. Dark horse, 5 to 12 or 11 to 1, whatever the fuel tolerates. Cross plane, not voodoo. Predator. Predator block. So motherfuckers could throw turbos down this bitch and let's go make 1100 legendary shit. That's not to say that this motor can't take some power because it's got better rods. But what I'm saying, a 5.2 Predator, stuff it in there. You got plenty of them, Ford. Nope. Five liter, two throttle bodies, better rods, two carbon traps. Same horsepower as a GT 18 to 23. Embarrassing. Oh, no. We suck again. Do I don't have that. 
I don't think I have that. No, Raptor, Lightning. I don't think I have We Suck Again. No, fuck yourself. Trump, come. Bye bye. Get the fuck out. Nothing. Danger Zone. Mike Tyson. We suck. Here it is. Oh, no. We suck again. Exactly. A, a, a real 500 wheel. Exactly. The real question is will the Gen 4 block be superior to the Gen 3? Well, Glass Roof Coyote, you got to understand. You can make a thousand horsepower on a Gen 3 right now. 4 3 2 combo. Right. What's the three? Cams? I'm telling you, 4-2-1, four, 4-2-1 four, two, one. Four, two, one would be good. Right now, you can grab a Gen 3, make a 1,000 wheel. And what fails usually? Not the rod, usually the piston, because the piston ring pack is sometimes too tight. There goes the ring lance, vaya con Dios. So now this dark horse has better rods for what? You're not going to make 1,100, and if you are, it's going to be once or twice and you're not going to allow that thing to make better power than the Predator. That'd be weird. Predator make 1100, no problem. With boost. Obviously, with boost. But the Dark Horse? Thousand? You could do that right fucking now! Right now you could do that. What's the incentive? Dark Horse will be run through by Gen 1 cars. Do you know that now the Dark Horse has become the laughing stock? You are now the fucking laughing stock. Of all modern generation coyotes, excluding the S197. No offense, S197, you ain't got shit for Gen 3s. But it's nice for you to try. Now, if you're modded, that's different. But a GT350, and I see a dark horse, I'm gonna egg it up. Let's go, bitch. I know you ain't tuned. You wanna see what a Gen 2 computer with a voodoo can do? And then the, the dark horse owner won't, don't, won't know what to do. You got to run the 350. You can't be like, no, nah, I'm not going to run them. You got to run them. That's your competition. Because Ford, there's nothing else left. You have now made yourself the competition. So now people are going to kick this Dark Horse's ass, and it's not going to sell. There are dealers currently, right now, offering them for sale for $90,000. You can buy a Gen 3 for thirty five. dollars You can buy a, uh, any GT350 for $49 to $60. Why the hell would you ever buy a dark horse? Unless you just like how it looks and you want to play with the display and you're never going to race. I don't understand. It's over, Johnny. Gen 3 is a body kit away from being a dark horse. It's over, Johnny. Ford might be the last muscle car left also. Dodge also announced that the last edition TRXs are being built. The Raptor R has been out for almost a year. Still can't tune it, right? Interesting. Ford has a muscle truck? Not really. Uh, blow it in the weeds, exactly. Y'all ain't ready for YouTubers to affirm all the dark horses for clout. Hi, YouTuber. Did you actually allocate a dark horse? And after seeing the horsepower numbers, did you pick it up? Did you go, yeah, I can't wait to pick it up and make videos. It made what? Hey, um, blah, 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 Ford dealership. I, I think I'm going to pass on that car. Uh, you can keep the deposit. Keep the $500 deposit. I don't care. But no, but sir, sir, sir what? I didn't sign nothing that I had to buy it. Just like dealers will screw you by saying, order it to your liking. And then when it shows up, the market adjustment goes on the sucker. Oh, you, oh, and then you go pick up what you thought was going to be your car. Oh, you, hello, Mr. Flores. Yeah, your car showed up to the dealership. Awesome. Let's go sign some paperwork. I'm already pre-approved. Let's go. All right, to just sign right here to this market adjustment. What do you mean market adjustment? Well, this is a very popular vehicle. And we just can't give it to you for $70,000. You're going to have to pay $85,700. Uh, I'm not paying $85,700. Cool. Johnny over there will. Guys, I told you. If it's not tunable right away, and it doesn't make a significant amount of horsepower more than the previous generation. It's a it's de DOA, dead on arrival. SK Jab says it's just a dark horse. Where's the usual suspects clout chasing on YouTube? But you can rev the engine with a key fob, staying about having a mental breakdown. Could you imagine the 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 absolute the absolute um excuse the excuses the the mental gymnastics the verbal gymnastics you're gonna have to do 
to 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 uh, to, to let people know or to 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 put an excuse. Look at what I put out there. Dude, I was busy on Instagram. Guys, I was so busy on Instagram. I got so many I got like 200 people fighting in the comments. Here you go. We sucking dick. We sucking dick. Taking everybody's <laughs> man. We are fucking everybody that got We sucking it. everybody. Man. Have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you <laughs> could do so you you do you could you you want you want <laughs> Guys, this is near me. 2024 Mustang GT Dark Horse. I put the ha 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 right next to the 99,000 and it almost looks like the dealership did that. So if you want a dark horse that makes less horsepower than a 13 than a, a Gen 3 S550 somewhere in Lake Worth they got one waiting for you. I was a busy guy. I'm not, a, I'm not an Instagram guy. I'm about to go for a week on this. Non-stop trolling that shit. And it's a 2015 GT. Exactly. Fat bitches fighting over food. Gave me $5. Watch for sell more dark horse crate engines than actual cars. Stang mode rolling around the floor as we speak. Wait till they start posting videos removing shit. EPA. There's a horse. Then there's a dark horse. For the price of a dark horse, you, that's used Hellcat territory. I'll pass. I'll keep my low 10 second Hellcat. That kid is John Federin. <laughs> Rami Zaidan, que hace? But it was a factory two-step and it pops and bangs. No more soft limiter. They wanted it hard. Yes. The video of the dark horse slamming off the rev limiter was Stita doing a 5,000 RPM rev limiter. And did they remove the video? It looks like... I, I'm, I'm going to go back to Instagram. Because I think they removed the video. Because it was on their, not on their story. It was, um, uh, let me see, uh, Stida. Stida Autosports? Let me see if they still have it out there. No, they still have it up there. Yeah, they still, good. Good for them. They didn't, they didn't I like that. Because, you know, it was a 5,000 RPM. It's a hard limiter. And I'm like, this is so stupid. Why would Ford do that? The clout, the clout, the clout. You remember the Gen 2, 3, Soft launch control, it'd go boom, 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 right? So it's a soft limiter. Boom, 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 boom. We'll launch fine. So Ford didn't say, well, this is a better rev limiter that launches better. Nope. It is a listen to me feature. Why? Why? Engineers. People in the software division of Ford right now that don't listen to this program. Who the fuck thought it was okay to go in there and give it a harder rev limiter for the launch control and two-step than previous generations and why? Is there a performance gain? No? It's just so it can sound cool? Fuck this car. It's a clout vehicle. It's not a better performing vehicle. It's heavier. And it makes the same power. With two cold airs. Two, two throttle bodies as a Gen 3. Stop it. I read somewhere that it said all Coyote engines for 24 had the hardware to make 500 crank. But the Dark Horse had some special tuning to make 500 crank over the 480 on the GT. Right. They tuned it from the factory. So if you're looking, if they become tunable, don't expect one motherfucking horsepower gain from this thing now one motherfucker you understand you understand how this works you if the car is ragged out calibration wise it ain't gonna make now one motherfucker horsepower over the current stuff the only the only reason you want to tune this is if you're shoving a turbo in it headers but we'll see what happens when they remove the carbon traps i am gonna Guys, if it throws a check engine light, if if anyone removes the carbon traps, puts it on, does a pull, makes more power, then pops an engine light. Oh my god. The the trolling 
Now it would suck for us. I'm going to be honest with you, it sucked for us. Because now you're entering that weird zone, right? Your weird zone. Oh, well, 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 we can we can tune it if someone else changes the parts, but the, does, does the tuning equal tampering? Or is it the, the hardware equal to tampering? Let's be honest. If there was a carbon trap on Mach 1s and you put up any other manufacturing, look, when you removed it, it didn't kick a light. When you remove the carbon trap from 21 to 23 Mustangs, it did not kick a light. So it's not tampering. So let's say the 24 GT, you remove both carbon traps and it's got these funky sensors in there and a speed density, you know, map sensor in the back. Mm, interesting. The Dark Horse was never impressive in my opinion. Didn't bring anything special to the table. No 5.2, no boost, just a glorified GT with gay badges. But Jay Bush, they pushed it as some technological wonder because it has two Samsung tablets that are slow on the dash. And you can twirl the car around as you drive. You twirl the car around. Look at me. I'm twirling the car. Look at this. And you crash into shit. The GT350. Upgrade from a GT. Badass brakes. 82, listen, bro, 8,200 RPM rev limiter. Tremec Trans, that wasn't that great. Badass seats. Magna Ride. Before that, you know, that was the first vehicle that had, the first Mustang that had Magna Ride. Adjustable dampening on the suspension, on the fly, was the 350. So it was a huge leap forward from the GT. You can get GT, a California Special, all the bells and whistles. Cool. Then you can get a completely different feeling vehicle. Like, whoa, this thing's just brakes, adjustable dampening, 8,200, 526 horsepower. So now there's a GT and a dark horse that makes 20 more horsepower and weighs 4,000 pounds. And cost twenty thousand more dollars. What is twenty thousand more than the GT in terms of hard parts and performance and um, anything upgrades? Dark Horse versus GT. Nothing. They added the carbon trap in twenty two. There you go. Thank you. Uh, can I put a supercharger on the intake and the turbo on the other? That'd be funny. I wonder if the carbon trap straighten the airflow as a secondary purpose. Justin, what? Why does it need to straighten the airflow? It's speed density based. Shit don't care. It's got a map sensor. Don't forget the key fob and rev drift brake. Pfft. Okay. Perfect. Tell me who designed the 24 Mustang when it went from being a performance oriented vehicle. You can go 12s, 11s, 10s, and that's how they pushed it to one that has a drift brake, a popping rev limiter, and a revving on the key fob feature. Don't forget that exactly. That's why I'm looking at a 1923 The car to buy is a 2019 to 2020 GT 350. That's the car to buy. It's plain and simple. It's got the Gen 2 Voodoo, holds up to good power. Your transmission and boost away from supercar status. Like four seconds, 60 to 130. Big, nice brakes, adjustable dampening, on the fly, great wheels, great tires, great uh, seats, 8,000 plus RPM, a twin turbo kit, transmission and a fuel system away from being in there. Vipers, Corvettes, like you're in there. You're in there with them people. Test group by millennials and Gen Zs using the hee-haw victim pronouns. Who's ready for $1,100 performance tune? I removed my carbon trap intake. Still has a web of plastic inside. It does. What are you going to do? self snitch alert. How do you push 25 PSI through a built Coyote and only get 950 horsepower on meth? I'm sure. Compression. Yes. And cam timing. 25 PSI is a measure of restriction. You understand? So if you have a very inefficient turbo setup, and it is 
pressurizing everything, like you experienced valve flow at 20 PSI, and you said, oh, let's do springs. Why are you doing springs? Because the exhaust side of the turbo system is restrictive. So now the boost number goes up, but power doesn't. Te technically, if the, if the um, turbo kit is built really well, with 20 PSI, you should make 1,000 horsepower. Jake's truck made 1,000 horsepower on 20 PSI. All Aldo kits make like that on 15, twin, twin turbo, obviously, on 15 or 20, P, or 15 to 16 PSI. So it's all about, it, the boost number is a restriction number. It is not a power output number. Alex, you did not say it with them people. Sounds like it's time to get, <laughs> sounds like it's time to get away from cars and start getting into the big inch twin turbo sand rails and do 160. 350s will be $100,000 in 2024. Bet me right after everyone sells the dark horse back to the dealer. 350 prices are going to go up now. Yesterday's price is not today's price, and I don't have it. God damn it, I thought I had the song clip. Sorry. Sorry, Fat Joe. Wish it could have been there from the start, but I'm here now. It's an Odin, I think. It's an Odin restriction. Dark horse, not even a fake snake. Do you believe the next Shelby variant will be a flop? I don't know because the GT is not a flop the 24 gt is not a flop it makes the same power as previous generations the problem with the gt is the price it's it's fifty thousand dollars plus think about that think of what fifty thousand dollars with a decently equipped gt what what that would buy you in 2020 2019 my zr1 was 60 something low 60s my zero one was low 60s you're telling me a gt a, oh but it's an 09 i'm sorry to zero one to c601 the most desirable zero one on the planet the most desirable corvette to this day to this day to this, this day, day to this day is more than likely the c601 that's like the car to have i love the c7 I love 60s Corvettes. Great. But not many people get emotionally affected by a car as much as they would either a Choppin' Z06 or a Choppin' ZR1. I'm selling my stock 19350, 44,000 miles. Damn. White with blue stripes. 57.5. Tech Pack AC hit the DM. That mile's a little high. Hopefully they're highway. Woo -wee. But I think the price is okay. It's why some idiots out there trading the 350s for dark horses just to have the latest thing. Anyone want to buy this 2.9 Whipple? I'm about to go stock 1314 blower VMP. So you would rather build a Gen 2 Voodoo instead of making 2020 GT500 fast? Yes. Absolutely. I know it's auto, but I'm talking just to make a fast roll car. Yes. GT350. Aldo kit. All pump gears and crank sprocket because you never know. Fuel system. I will shit on a GT500. I will shit on a GT500. It's heavier. It's going to do the pull maybe twice. Then it's over. I will shit on a GT500 with a twin turbo 350. Meanwhile, guys are out there trying to sell Cobras for 60K. Yeah, that's something I noticed too. 25 PSI and only 950 horsepower? Sounds like 13, 14 GT500 number. Wonder how much Ford paid the video game companies to design the dash graphics. Should have spent that on better performance. Again, Nito Diaz, there's no competition. And the engineers have gotten a free pass. The engineers are breathing a sigh of relief because Charger, Challenger, gone. TRX, gone. So now they have free reign. And you would think they'd give you the best product. How can they give you the best product if they have no one to compete against? They're competing against ghosts. The Charger, the Challenger, the previous generation Mustang. They're com they are now betting on the fact that we can give you a, a nose-jobbed, teched-out, gimmicky, because it is gimmicky. It is a drift stick rev limiter and pop verbally bullshit and key fob revving than to give you actual performance it, it they, they have no competition so they're just gonna phone it in there's no comp we're good we're, we're 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 fat there's a lot of food on the table we're the only ones left 
we're not going to give you shit because we're not going to be pushed by anybody. Imagine a car company existed out there and gave you rear-wheel drive, V8, 10-second cars that had nominal tech or triathletes, 10-second, high 10-second cars, lightweight materials, decent on turns, meaning a, a neutral car. Something that runs 10s or low 11s off the rip and something that with some tires and suspension can really be an awesome track car. And it costs $49.5. Now Ford goes, holy shit, people are going to buy that. What do we have to do? We have to step up our game or be aggressive with the pricing. We have to do something. Now they don't got to do shit. They don't got to do nothing. Nobody's building that. What, the Japanese market? Cars that are, the maybe the M3s, because they're $70,000. And the M2s, maybe. But, but again, you are not competing against Ford. Ford is the rear-wheel drive V8. More people, more often than not, are not going to go for performance. They're going to go for what engine package do I have? A six-cylinder turbo car sounds like ass. I'm sorry. Fast? Yes. Sounds like ass. Unless it's a GTR. But let's be honest. Not everything sounds like a GTR. So, who else is competing in the V8 rural, rural um, drive space? Nobody. They made Fast and Furious Mustang. Someone hired too many blue hairs at Ford. I meant modded versus modded, though. Yeah. Give me a full fucking modded GT500 2020 version. Then give me a full fucking modded GT350. Give me that 350. What's the quickest car? Hear me out. Who builds the highest end 350s around? Fat House Fab. What's the fastest GT500 they've built? Hello? There is just a limitation, and it's called the transmission. So it shows the former. Um, someone says, we have seen the peak of the ice power game. What time to be alive? Sad it's all over now. At least you guys live this. If you're a 29 to 35-year-old guy, you are spoiled as hell. You started messing with cars 10 years ago. You were 19 or 16, and you saw the coyote roll out. And you said, look at this monster. 420. You didn't live through the three-valve era. You didn't live through the two-valve era. Cobra was a blip on the radar. You didn't live through that era. You started paying attention when coyotes were 420 horsepower. Now, 10 years later, you think this is normal. Uh-uh. This ain't normal. I've been through... I am like a guy that was in the service between, I don't know, let's say I was in the service between World War I and the tail end of my service, World War II, and I somehow survived two world wars. And I was able to see the fruits of my labor in peace all the way through the 60s. 46 through the 60s, peace. You are living through that peaceful time. If you're a young guy, 35 or so, you are living through the most peace time of Mustang there's ever been. Spoiled by horsepower, friendly, tuned, end gauges, SETs, whipples, twin turbos. Everything is great. Motherfucker, I went through World War I and World War II. You understand, Sonny? I've seen... What a 180 rear wheel horsepower Fox body performs like. I have broken six T5s in a summer. 12s was saying something. 11s, you were a god. 10s, you were... You, you, were, you were like Thanos if you went 10s. And now I see these, these cars rolling out, make, running a good number, and I'm like... Enjoy it for a little while because them bad times are coming back. But what I do love is this. 
The cars I grew up with are still the fastest motherfuckers around. The Fox body. Why? Light. Four, triangulated four link. Perfect wheelbase for, for drag radials. Tons of aftermarket. I don't care. Throw an LS. Throw a 2J. Throw a small block four. Throw a Hemi. I don't give a fuck what you throw in it. It's a fucking Fox body. Because I suffered through the slow era. And I love seeing that them Fox bodies are out there running 410 in the eighth. Threes. Love that shit. Telling you. You guys have it really good. You have no idea what it is to live through a a malaise era of performance. Get out of that. See it flourish. And then hear you guys talk shit on, on, on how spoiled you are when it comes to horsepower. Now... Chickens come home and roost. It's over, Johnny. The the horsepower, because there's no competition, it's over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. It's over. Electric bullshit over. now. Nothing. Bzzz. You just don't turn Bzzz. it off. Hey, what was that? That was the Roadster running $7.99. Oh, that's gay. I'm not even old. I understand what the old cats have to go through. They're still the kings of the game. Morello didn't run nines in Allah until 2001. Finally caught alive. Hello, hello. Says no chill. Stage two, non strike kit, and F cam was King Daddy. Fat House Fab cards you guys are talking about are sequential swap. Not all of them. Some of them are H pattern T56. Man shit. Those guys constantly change shit. Uh, 40s here. 10 used to be the big block swaps. All right, 460 with a 200 shot. Tell them, kid, exactly. Got a tune from you with the stock CM, a Gen 2 Coyote. Do I need to retune it? Fastida Colt. Yes, you need to retune it, Alex R. Short belt mod for the win. World War One. I'm 37 and you're not wrong. Well, I'm 22. That's exactly what happened in 05 to 09 when the Camaro died. Ford got lazy and gave you the three valve. Excellent point. One slow 5-0. You made some insanely great points in the last couple of lives. Camaro went away, right? Three valve. Camaro comes back. Coyote. Charger, Challenger, Camaro, go away. Ford has no incentive to give you badassery. Catfish was awesome. 35, a little off, and um, three valve wasn't even out yet when I was out of high school. Fox at 19. I'm very happy with my 2020 PP1 with the Magnum Ride 44,000 fully loaded. COVID purchase from the dealership. Even happier after watching the Dark Horse Dino now. Purchased ESS kit. Ready to run my bros, Fox. No internet in the 80s and 90s. Just magazines and word of mouth times and great times. Absolutely. How often do you think 350s have major problems from what you've seen? Not major problems, but the 2016 through the 2018, if you're going to have issues, it's going to be oil consumption. And again, that motor was made to rev to 8,200 RPMs. It wasn't made to go 50,000 miles and rev to 8,200 RPMs. Uh, no motor made to rev at 8,200 RPMs is also designed to go 50,000 miles without many issues. The 18 to, sorry, the 19 and 20, same, but it's stronger. That's a toy. That's not a daily. Damn, he's right. Camaro dies, Ford goes, shit, we don't got to give you more horsepower than a, than, a, than a Mazda Speed 3. So then, I was, I was right there. This is like a war flashback. I thought I'm good. I'm good. War's over. It's all good. I'm in my three valve. This is the most horsepower Ford makes besides the GT500. Awesome. And then a Mazda Speed 3 with like a tune and a downpipe. It took every ounce of my driving ability to beat him by a headlight. And I said, are you fucking kidding me? This was in 2011. I drove right to the dealership and I go, tell me about this Coyote. 420 horsepower, Coyote engine, MT82, 373s, 401A package. Left a lot with it that day. Can't wait to see 16 to 18 year olds with drift brake at meets take out light poles. That's why the 2010 S187 is cheeks i know carters that's what i'm saying unless you got deep pockets the 500 is going to be faster for a lot less a hundred thousand dollar car is faster for a lot less a hundred thousand dollar car 
is faster for a lot less? 50 to 60,000? Turbo kit, fuel system, and a transmission? Turbo kit, fuel system, and a transmission. 25,000. Where do you, your car stock is a hundred thousand dollars? Stock. Come on, stop, stop. This weird, uh, fuzzy math you're doing is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Somehow, Alex forgot about the Korean War. These kids never heard of a Gia three valve struggling with three fifty Zs and test pipes. Three fifties were looking at or under twenty thousand miles. Alex's worst nightmare after that kayak date, that three speed left scars. Imagine there was a guy at war and he thought the war was over. And he's got his gun down with a bayonet. Oh, thank God we killed all those. I th- Thank God we firebombed all those Japanese in the tunnels. And you're walking back to base and one of them motherfuckers pops out and you got to... Uh, 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 uh. That's what happened with me in the three valve. I thought the war was over. I thought I could peek my head out and go, are we good to just enjoy ourselves? And this fucking Mazda Speed 3 gave me PTSD. 350 will be fully built before you even buy the GT500. No, no, no. If it wasn't for the $50,000, oh no, forget, I get it. The Badger, and it's $100,000. Not 50,000, it's $100,000. $100,000. I understand what you're saying, though. Um, Aldo kit is all you need. You can build, not a fat house. Okay, fat house gives you quality. They give you their catch cans. They give you their the, the weld. They give you the fitment. They give you the, the, the MoTeC. You can run just as fast if you build it yourself and have some know-how. I'm not saying exactly as fast, but I can build an 8-second 350 it's not going to be as refined as their stuff. Their stuff is ridiculously refined, especially with the with the Motec traction control stuff. I wouldn't touch Motec stuff because I, it's not that serious. <laughs> like I'm gonna build. I'd rather build a Fox body. <laughs> For your I'm building a Fox body. You said it perfectly last time. Pre 2010, the only thing you feared as a Corvette or an LS owner was a built Fox body or a Cobra. 2011 changed the game. You'll never see it again. Guys, you you don't understand. You don't understand the world of an LS owner. They didn't worry about Fords. They they simply didn't worry. If I'm in my GT500, knowing that I got 11 or so hundred, I don't know, but I suspect, 11 or so hundred horsepower under the hood and an S-boy or a B-boy, 58, get the fuck out of my shit oh you scared that's right i'm scared of racing a two second or slower vehicle than mine and crashing yeah that i'm scared you're right i got a lot to lose in this thing so ls guys were driving around and they would see a, a it says gt on the on the fender and they go fuck out of here then they see Let's say, okay, let's set the scene. Let's set the scene. You're driving in your long drag straight wherever you're at in your town, whether Memorial Drive in Chicopee, Route 5 in West Springfield, Berlin Turnpike, right? You're driving your LS car that makes good power, right? Let's say it's an 11-second car. You're driving, and you look in the rearview mirror, and you see what looks to be a three-valve, you know, the retro-styling Mustang. You don't even get that feeling in your stomach. You go unless he's got a vortex and even if he does have a vortex he ain't gonna make more than 450 horsepower because he's just gonna explode i got him covered whatever then the next thing you look up and you see those very distinctive two yellow lights because the fox body owner only has his parking lights on because it's not dark enough to turn on the headlights but it's just dark enough to let motherfuckers know this is an 87 to 93 fox Everybody knows the look. Everybody knows the look. Fox body at night. I'm going to type in fox body at night images. <laughs> it says four body. Oh no, it's going to be like, it's going to pop up porn or prawn. Prawn, prawn. I can't say the word porn because it just goes away. 
Yep, right here. When you're driving around and you see that, you go, ah, fuck. There's a fox back there. Shit. Yep, there's a fox back there. Fuck. God damn it. I wonder what he's got. You think he LS swapped it? You think he uh, put a small block Ford, big inch small block Ford in it? Fuck. LS guys only worried about that or a Cobra back in the days. Corvette, LS guys, they didn't even look at your three valve. They didn't care about your three valve. Then the Coyote gave the respect back. And people were like, oh shit, this one's serious. And it was a huge monumental shift. If you were around, if you were around the internet, when the Coyote started popping off, the video that opened my eyes was not only Evolution's video. No, the video that opened my eyes was a blue Coyote with a 2.9 Whipple Crusher kit beating a Viper on a roll. Beating a Viper on a roll. I went, Mortimer, we're back. The excitement was there. I went, this thing is serious. If anybody can link me to that video. It was from the dash point of view of the car, of the, the coyote. And he roll raced a Viper. And it was like, wah, bah, bah. And I was like, oh, he's even with him. Then the coyote on the slam forth. Boom, put a fucking fender on him. I went, oh, we're back. Fast forward 2024. The 500 horsepower, $70,000, $90,000 after markup. Dark Horse makes the same horsepower as the previous generation. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. <sighs> LMR Dino, the 24A10315 and 2018 A10315. Cool. The Wolf bought a new LS3 and C6 2008. Ford didn't exist. 306, 12 to 5 compression, gutted 250, shot C4. Badger in the house. Who's Badger? Um. Tesla Model 3 refresh got released. Now has 423 miles of range. Sheesh. I've owned both cars. LOL. All right. Do you think? Okay. What's happening? I miss my Arog Z. Slow as shit, but a classic. S197 chases for 12s, 11s, 10s, and 9s. Was badass when they first released. The aftermarket was on it. We suck again. Clips incoming. Where? Are you on Instagram? You guys sending me clips? Or on um, Gmail? I'm going to get up on Gmail and Instagram. In case y'all motherfuckers sending shit. Because uh, that era is never to be relived. And Ford is going to just get fat on the hog and, and, and or high or fat or whatever. Fat as a hog because nobody's really looking to push the envelope with anything. Let me go. Instagram. Got one message on Instagram. Hot sauce. Just laughing. Okay. He's laughing about stuff. Okay. So no clips coming in yet. Good. Got it. Oh, you're talking about clips where you're clipping the show. Yes, exactly. Clip the show. That era was so exciting. It's so exciting. To have the Coyote bring back the aftermarket, it made millionaires out of people. The Coyote game made millionaires out of aftermarket. Like, Whipple? Th like, the name Whipple was, wasn't was a thing. No offense. Whipple was making supercharges for a long time for, like, the boating industry. Like, no one took... No one was talking Whipple in Ford stuff. Nobody. Coyote came around. That company exploded. VMP. Nobody was shoving TVSs in. They were doing it in three valves. Making a whole whopping 400 rear wheel horsepower. Then the Coyote got it. 10 PSI makes 600. Holy shit. We're back. It's over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Johnny. It's over. It's over. Should I take a Nobody drink? It's over. Nothing. It's probably, I you don't know. Shit, don't turn it off. I don't know shit about wine, but I'm sure it tastes as bad as the dark horse performs. I don't drink though, so this might get me to drink. Uh, absolutely love the coming to America. <laughs> He's not butter. He's fine. Um, I think the JD Swag is saying you have a bunch of potential clips. Exactly. If PBD DCT, I lose. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Has Luntude any sub 95 350s in the quarter? 
No, most of the customers that we have are roll guys. I think we rolled like a, we rolled oh, we rolled. I think we did like a three second sixty to one thirty um, GT three fifty stock motor. And I haven't heard shit from them. This is Talking Shit Thursday, and I'm here for it. Waiting on a nitrous kit for the Ford Lightning. Exactly. Don't drink it yet, Alex. Exactly. Kenny Bell was the only PD blower back in the Fox Body day, right? Whipple wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. Coyote came around, made millionaires out of people. I lived that Coyote sweep. I used to work at a shop, had a guy from Mexico, came in, built a 2011 with a Pro Charger, 10's first outing. Dino did 440 for the Dark Horse Manual. Check it out. My car did 440. My 2019 on 27 degrees of timing and E85, because E85 don't make that much of a difference at 27 degrees, made 440. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Probably blew it up after that 60 to 130. No. Um, let me ask if Junior, let me see. Let me see if Junior's on Facebook. Let's see if we can look it up. Um... That, that 60 to 130 from that 350 was wild. It sounded so cool. Let me see if Junior's here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit up Junior live. Uh, at Junior, do you have the clip of, the, of Randall's, Randall's old 350 doing a 60 to 130 hit? 60, 60 to 130 hit. Oh, shit. I can't, I can't, I can't type to 130 hit and we'll see what he says. Um, I, I can go to his profile and look, but I, I don't think he, he doesn't post that much, which is good. He's, he's a family man. He ain't about that internet bullshit, but I'm going to, I'm going to scroll through his, um, cause a lot of people tag him on shit. Jesus Christ. Tag, 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 tag. But there was a 350 that straight got it, bro. This is a 350. Uh, it's old, bro. It's an old video. It's a, it's a, it's at night. It's on the highway, obviously, Mexico. Um, it's an old video. Dang it. We'll see if he pops up with it because um, I want to show you what that thing did with the stock motor. That thing was stupid. Alex, the 350 that ran the 3 second 60 to 130 is the one that had the 315s in the rear? Yes, Joe Swish. 440 in the stock tune? Yes, Boosted 5.0 said um, the Dark Horse. But the Dark Horse may has two throttle bodies too. Mine on a stock tune? 446. Young people will never understand the Fox about the days. Working all week to spend $100 to $200 to some part from Summit. Uh, cash on delivery. COD was a thing back in the day, guys. You had to have a check. Cash on delivery. If not, they wouldn't give you the part. Bro. What all way would you recommend for a Gen 2 2050? <laughs> no. 10, uh, t oh, I'm sorry. Um, 1550 synthetic. Is Lund's tune locked when sent or changes can be bad? Locked. Why the fuck would we let you change our tune? Are you psycho? Alex, did you say three seconds? I said three seconds. A twin turbo GT350 stock motor T56 3.15 gears went three seconds 60 to 130. 3.9 something. It was fast, fast. My brother's 85 GT with an 11R trick flow kit made 350 wheel stock 302 bottom end. Hurts a lot of feelings on newer cars. Fox bodies will always be kings. That's why a lot of people here poo poo the fact that my Fox body makes 455 to 460 rear wheel horsepower. They go, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? This is 90s technology I'm dealing with. That car has makes 460 rear wheel horsepower with 90s technology and that is not that impressive if you know shit if you have solid roller and crazy ported cams ported cams crazy ported heads and a badass cam i'm telling you that 500 on race gas more is is normal but 460 people went that's it that's it Guys, that is 100 plus horsepower more than the normal. I'm sorry. That is 100 horsepower to the wheel more than the normal built Fox bodies made back in their day with 90s technology. Um, yeah, bro thinks he'll make the tune better just by adding more. Yeah, what changes are you going to make? <laughs> that car was way before. <laughs> You're right. Like what changes are you going to make to the tune to make it better? Well, Lund Racing's tuned 5,000 of these. Too bad they don't unlock it so I can improve on it. Exactly. 
Man, I really missed the Fox age. You had no idea what a stock 302 with a B cam or a built 347, no social media, videoing races, potato cam, and up dating it to Street Fire. People are spoiled. Factory cars running 10s. We used to have to work hard for 11s or 12s. I was on SVT Performance watching videos back in the day like crazy. Fox bodies, 4 gens, F bodies, Coyotes, the Mount Rushmore of drag cars. Fox bodies, king, power to weight ratio, exactly. So if you didn't live that era, you have no idea why I am, I'm, I'm watching it and it's all coming back. I'm watching what's happening with Ford and they're repeating the two valve days. Oof, guys, do you don't remember how much of a kick in the nuts it was to go from a legendary Fox body to a 96 to 98, 215 horsepower GT? Bro. Then we came back. Cobra. Oh, okay, cool. All oh, three valve shit. Coyote. And we've had 12 years, 13 years of Coyote performance. Spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. Alex, you got to put that video on the next live if you get a hold of it. Which, which, which one? <laughs> which video? Did the 650, the S650 copy the new BMW? M Did he decide on what car he's going to buy? What's talking about? Pre, oh, oh, you're talking about the uh, three second 60 to 130? I don't know. I got to find it. Big inch, 351 Windsor and a Fox was king back in the day and still holds its own to this day. To, to this day, when I go out with the Fox body, who am I hunting? Coyote Mustang. Coyote must. I am hunting Coyote Mustangs when I go out with my Fox body. I look for them. I go, you want some of this old sauce, Bendejo? You looking for some old man sauce? Oh, that's just the Fox body. He can't be. What? What the fuck happened? Big inch, small block Ford. And 3,400, 3,300 pounds. But I don't get it. I got a JLT and an E85 Lund Ghost Cam tune. I don't give a fuck. I got a 650 Holly in the bitch. <laughs> oh, good shit. The Mustang too, though. Super chips was the thing. Three valve had that chop. 10 holes. A notch on 10 holes will run 13s or it'll run 10s. You just don't know. A notch on 10 holes, you know you're like... Them, them meats in the back are a little thick. Look at them. Mm, I don't know about those 10 holes. That motherfucker must have wiped them because they're thick. And even the 28.9 fit on that bitch. All bubbled out. You see a fox about to get all sideways and shit. No anti-roll bar. This was the day before anti-roll bars were a thing. You know what we were doing? We were sticking airbags in the spring, Bicho. To counteract the, 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 the roll effect. We would literally pump up. And a, like a football shaped bag in the spring on the passenger side to counteract the, the, the twisting it would do. People like Wes Evans and Rob Blankenship made the name for themselves with their small block forward car. Street Fire used to be the shit back in the day. 85 on the dash. 85 on the dash. Alex, how's the new car doing? I have not had to touch the motherfucker. Knock on wood. I just get in it, turn it on, and just drive it. The Dark Horse has failed to latch. You hunting Dark Horse? Absolutely. Oof. If I am in the Fox on military, on 95, or on Beeline, I am looking for you, Coyote owner. And if I get beat, big deal. It's an old horse and carriage. But if you get beat, oof. Just wait till that fucking 150 shot goes in that bit. Ugh. Football in the spring. Them boys thick. If I smell race gas or E, it becomes a serious fox. Football in the past in the spring was chassis tuning. Got the 150 shot fox body. Not sure what else was done to it with the JLT, ED5, and Jet 3 manifold. Come with me with that shit. Come with me. Come to, come to my house with that shit, Peter. Are you in Florida? <laughs> if you're in Florida and you owned any NA Mustang that doesn't have cams in the 85... <laughs> Because <laughs> the cammed E85 CJ car will fuck up my shit. Gen 3. But if you have an NA Coyote and you want to fuck around with a Fox, I'm here. We need a video of Alex racing his dark horse with his Fox body. Talking about Ghost Cam tunes, why do some people say it messes up the cams? Because they're stupid. Alex, what throttle body do you think is the best for drivability stock? I mean, it's a really easy question to uh, say. 2023 oppression horse. <laughs> Good. 
Very good. 2023 oppression horse. I had a bag in the pump and the pump, it will tire pump like Fox Life. Okay, got it. I remember people putting Nerf footballs in their rear Fox Body Springs. Military bases will be full of them. The south sides. Oh my God. South sides. The bars. Oh, if you had these, if you had south side bars, Fox Body. Bro, you are a you you are an OG of all OGs. South sides were like, oh, what do you got there? What, what do you got in the I got South Sides? What the fuck's a South Side? That right there. The spring perch is adjustable. It's crazy looking. Wow, South Side? What the fuck? That's just wild. Yeah, that was that, yeah. And then you know you had Wild Rides. Remember Wild Rides? Um <laughs> uh, they had the um, complete um, weld in or have the weld in. Uh, oh man, where are you? Please show me the um, the shoot mount. Here we go. The, the suspension parts. Ford fucking bull par. They had yeah, Fox. They had the complete torque box reinforcement kit. This is when you started getting serious, son. You're like, man, I got to get some Wild Rise Battle Boxes. You, the Battle Box was like saying Pampers. The Battle Box was like saying Q-Tips. The Battle Box was this. The Torque Box Reinforcement Kit. And if you're a real G, like if you're about that life, you got this. If you are like a psychopath and you love to fabricate, you got the complete Torque Box, not reinforcement, the replacement kit. With adjustable motherfucker, woo! This was, this is like hardcore Fox Body bullshit back in the nineties. I got Wild Ride stuff in the back. You mean battle boxes? No, I got the whole motherfucker. You bought the whole thing? Yep, I bought the whole thing. Hold oh, the S box? Yep, I got the S box. Damn, son, you're serious. Then you go see the car run fourteen five at ninety eight miles an hour. But, but at least his torque box won't rip off. <laughs> Fully unlock the DCT. <laughs> he said fully unlock the DCT. I love it. I love it. I love when people have no fucking idea what they're talking about. Got the video. It's crappy though because my friend took the vid from behind and I don't want it. Daytona in the house. I had a Wild Rides upper torque box repair kit after the lake with traction control arms. Hey Alex, I'm looking for a manual Fox 2 cruise around on the weekends and in my area people are asking 12 to 15. That's what they go for if they're clean. If they're clean, that's what they go for. Too poor for the whole box replacement back in the day. If a NOS back is in real good condition, that's about right. If it's a hatch and average shape, walk away. Exactly. I can't wait till you get the GT500 dialed in and Douche in a dark horse pulls. Look, the GT500 dialed in on the street is like a 900 horsepower car. It's useless at 1100. Like IRS cars hook better. Like an 1100 horsepower GT500 2020 and up definitely hooks from a roll better than mine does. I have that adjustable upper deal for my wild rides on my Fox. Um, and it's an inside truck. Exactly. Yeah, he gets it. No, he gets it. Lakewood 9010s. He did. <laughs> He unlocked it. I love how people say he unlocked it. Trying to find one below 10000 and have bolted on. It's almost impossible to find one um, at that price. Let me see if he has it. Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. Coming at you. Three second. 60 to 130. Here we go. Uh, rolling anti-lag. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's see if we can uh, post it. Okay, get rid of the sponsors. Boom. Um. I'm going to leave the volume low, so it's going to be a lot. I wish I could just click it and see the whole thing. Okay, fuck it. Okay, I'm sorry. That is the sexiest sounding shit. Ghost Cam dumped twin turbo GT350. It was threes. Boom. Okay, I'm not that impressed. 
It's 469, man. I hope he posted another video because 469, I mean, it's fast, but it ain't threes. I'm here talking threes. But goddamn, 469 is like 1,000 horsepower DR, DR1 shit, right? Two, one shift. Let's go to his page. Does he have a page? Uh, does he have a page showing a three second 60 to 130? That's him. Uh, no, no. Oh, he used to have a badass GT500 back in the day. No. Damn, too bad, bro. I thought it was three six to 130, but 469 is fast shit. But that's that's literally all I would do. I thought he went threes, but maybe I'm wrong. I 469, that's a thousand horsepower ZR1 territory. Shit. But damn, 315's in the rear. That thing's top speed as well, over 200 miles an hour. I just busted from that idle. I still have my old street racing car from the 90s. Windsor with a trim. It's like a time machine. Yeah, definitely not a three. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a 380. And I'm like, what the hell did I see go a 380? Maybe, definitely not that. Someone sold laser cut pieces. Plate you could weld to stock control arm and make them tubular control arms. But the Fox body suspension, four cylinder springs in the front, football in the rear. Exactly. I could have sworn it was a 360 to 130. It's cool, but it's not three seconds cool. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm still doing it. Um, DCTs can go threes. Yeah, in a, um, in a uh, whatchamacallit, in an R8. An R8 can go threes. Uh, GTRs can go threes. McLarens can go threes, sure. His short shift in the third hurt him for sure. He didn't build all the boost. <laughs> no, I would never do, I would never do a max effort 350. What I would do is, a four second, 60 to 130, and that's a Hellion kit, like a Hellion sleeper. It's like a Hellion sleeper, nothing crazy, small turbos, 50 somethings. Let me go look at the post again. I think it's 50 something. <laughs> Let me see. Yep, look, precision 55s. Not 62, 64s, not 67, 48s, or 68, 72s. Precision 55s. Showing off that PCM Tech Multitune OS mod with our ghost cam on the fly. This was posted almost a year ago, 29 weeks ago. So before you, your favorite tuner tells you he can PCM Tech. <laughs> I've seen that H pattern in the twos. Right. <laughs> That's funny. When do you expect to make the track with the GT500 when it cools down and there's a rental? Um, I got to go on a day where there's some support because it's just me, guys. It's just by my fucking self so i can do it though i'm just you know going up there by yourself doing everything by yourself it gets old really quick but if i do it it'll be a rental probably late october after i get everything dialed in gotta go on the dyno gotta make sure everything's good and get out go up there with a with a with a tvs first if it makes about 1100 with the tvs and see what it runs i'm not gonna start changing blowers at the track it's crazy to turbo 350 with dumb sounds like i want to kill you at what like it wants to kill you at what? Um, I I want I don't want to return because I don't have cats on my 15 long two bolt times. Okay, Voodoo's have a unique sound under the, under boost. All jokes aside, that would be sick ass car. I always remember that 350 manual Voodoo just amazing combination. Yeah, no, I get it. Four seconds, 60 to 130, T56 twin turbo, E85 fuel system. Vaya con Dios, nothing crazy. It's good shit. You think thousand horsepower is necessary for threes on a 60 to 130? Oh, you need a lot more than that. Fours is kind of attainable on 10 or 80 cars with like 980 and up but threes you need probably twin turbo stuff to to roll into it a little bit and then have just like 30 pounds of boost poured in at the top hard to pack a parachute by myself i would not use the parachute i'd, I'd bring it just to have it on and have it the i would not use the parachute it has willwood six pots that bitch is stopping Alec, what's the favorite car you've ever owned? The Black 11. The Black 11, dude. The Black 11 because it feels like a Fox body, but it was new enough and refined enough to make me feel like, okay, I have a slightly newish car. The Fox bodies are just time machines, and, and they were terrible cars on themselves. But I cut my teeth in Fox body. I learned all the suspension stuff on Fox body. I learned carburetor tuning on Fox body. But the Black 11 brought me through breakups. I went through like three or four girlfriends with that car. I went through a four. I was homeless in that car. I went, that car holds a special place in my in my heart. Hush Money is not my favorite car. It's just the car that I it it, it 
evokes more emotion because of what I had to go through to get it. How do you guys do with the weather? Everyone did fine. Lunds got away with a little bit of uh, wind, no flooding. I got nothing. So it's the people that are, are affected, I don't know personally anyone that was affected, but the lunds were fine. We worked right through it. We did not miss a beat. We were sending tunes in the middle of a hurricane. We don't fuck around. Guy at Workers probably has the largest Fox body collection in the area trying to trade me a roller for a gun or two. Either a 500 or the black GT. Okay, you got to gut it like a NA 10R80 King Daddy car. Okay, let's, let's, let's wrap it up. So today we talked about the Dark Horse really disappointing everybody, but it is no surprise because Ford has no competition. Ford is not going to give you the latest and greatest. Ford is not going to ring anything out. Ford is not going to really give you anything badass. And the reason it has two cold airs and two throttle bodies, according to Dustin Whipple, is because it has two carbon traps in the cold air. And I've always suggested or expected or thought about or wondered if you remove them, will it make more power? And if it makes more power, will it throw a code it'll be interesting to see what the deal is with that if it doesn't throw a code we're good gooch let's go but if it throws a code things things might get a little a little bit more difficult so as always we're going to talk about it once uh, uh we get more information more dino pulls are made tuning becomes available because right now you can't tune that bit so just get a gen 3 and be happy with it all right guys i'm out of here i'll be back on sunday i might put a bunch of clips up and post them up on the channel because three minute clips or so seem to do really well. And I'm going to go over the video tonight, get some clips and get them up tomorrow at about 5 PM just to have content on the show and then have content on Facebook and Instagram. So hopefully you guys do that again, guys, the best way to support the channel is to become a member or to do super chats. But I prefer memberships because it is a steady monthly nub that helps the channel grow big time. I'm out of here. I will see you guys on Sunday. For the peasant chat, we'll talk some shit then. Labor Day, so I'm not working on Monday. So if you guys are expecting tunes on Monday, it ain't going to happen because it's Labor Day. So hopefully you guys enjoy your long weekend coming up. But I'll see you on Sunday. We'll talk a little shit in the morning to wake up to and see what happened in the last couple of days in the automotive community. There has been a recall on Ford trucks. We can talk about that. But I really didn't want to shit on Farley and recalls. I wanted to talk about the 24 GT and Dark Horse. Proving Yolo Domus has been right from the beginning of time. Have a good rest of your night. I'll see you guys Sunday. See you later. Bye.